All right, so the first recipe I'm making is pumpkin cookies. Now I love that you only need three ingredients. So you need a spice cake mix and go ahead and dump the whole thing in. Next, you're gonna take just a can of pumpkin. Again, dump the whole thing in. Then just go ahead and mix it all together. Now it might take a minute or two for it to combine, but keep at it, it will mix. Then you're just gonna add two cups of your favorite chocolate chips. I love milk chocolate chips, but you can use dark chocolate chips too. Then just mix that until it is well combined. Now to make these cookies, I love using cookie scoops or even an ice cream scoop. It makes it so much easier and they all are the same size. Now here's my secret. I usually put aside a few chocolate chips so I can put them on top so you can get the perfect cookie every time. All right, you're gonna bake them at 350 degrees for about 10, uh, eight to 10 minutes whenever they are cooked on the bottom and yeah, they're still a little soft. The next one is my skinny banana cookies. I love making these if I'm looking for a little bit healthier of a treat. So I have two bananas here that I'm just smashing with a fork. You can use a blender or a beaters too, whatever makes it easiest for you. Now once it is nice and soft, you're going to add one cup of old fashioned oats into the mixture. Then you're gonna add about a fourth a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips or milk chocolate chips, whatever one you choose. Then you're going to mix it well. It's gonna take a minute to get everything wet, but just give it some time. Again, I'm using my cookie scoop because I love using it. They're all uniform and they all cook the same. So that's why I love using a cookie scoop. Now you're gonna cook this at 350 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes until they harden up and they are cute little banana cookies. The next one is Rolo Pretzel Turtle Bites. Now I would suggest getting smaller pretzels than I have here because the Rolo did not want to stay in the middle. So smaller pretzels is a must, but they still worked out. So you're gonna put a Rolo on each pretzel. Then you're gonna cook it in the oven at 350 degrees for about three minutes. The Rolos are going to be melty and all you have to do is put a pecan on top and you are done. Next up is three ingredient Reese's fudge. Now. It really is three ingredients and you guys, it is one of my favorites. So you're gonna take a nine by nine square pan, line it with foil and then spray it with non-cook cooking spray. Then you're gonna take your Reese's. I had a very good helper helping me today. We're gonna do 16 on the bottom of the pan. Next, you're gonna take three cups of chocolate chips and then just dump them into a microwave safe bowl. Now you could do this on the stove top also, but I love using the microwave. Then you're gonna take one can of sweetened condensed milk and just pour it in over your chocolate chips. Then I like to microwave in 30 second increments and then stir in between each 30 seconds, then stick it right back in the microwave. Now once everything is melted, it's starting to get a little bit thick, this is how we like it. So now it's time to put it onto your Reese's. We're making the rest of the fudge. Go ahead and pour it on very gently. The Reese's might come up a little bit as you're spreading, so just try and hold them down as you spread. Now it's time for the topping, and of course, it needs to be Reese's. So I started out with 22 Reese's. I put 16 on the bottom, and the rest I am just crumbling up and I'm pressing down into the fudge so when it cools and hardens, the Reese's will be stuck in there. Now I let this sit in the fridge for about an hour and a half, and it is Harden and ready to go. So I carefully pull away my foil and then you can cut right into it. Now I love this fudge because you don't need a candy thermometer and it actually keeps its shape pretty well. I also love that you can see the Reese's on the bottom and on the top. Now whenever I make this fudge, it is gone instantly. Next up is my luscious lemon cake. Now I love this because you only need two ingredients. So we have lemon cream, pie filling, and then one box of angel food cake. That simple. So you're going to dump the whole bag of your angel food cake into a bowl, and then you're going to just add in your lemon filling. Now I would suggest mixing very carefully at first because that cake mix will get all over. Once it's combined a little bit, then start using a whisk and it will make the job a little easier for you. Now I sprayed a 9 by 13 pan with non-stick cooking spray and then you're just going to dump in the batter. Spread it around as evenly as you can, but don't worry, it will cook and it will even out pretty well. 
Now once it is pretty even, you're ready to bake it. You're gonna bake it at 350 degrees for 20 minutes and it really turns out perfect. This is angel food cake with a lemon into it. Oh, it's so good. I like to add a little bit of whipped cream and then some strawberries on top. All together, this thing tastes amazing. Next up is cookies and cream pretzels. Now you can use any pretzels for this. I found some cute little round ones, so I thought I would give those a try. So you're just gonna melt some white chocolate. You can use white chocolate chips. You can use whatever you want, but I just did a little bit because I don't need a ton. This is a perfect after school snack for my kids. So you're gonna go ahead and dip your pretzels and then put them on a, lay out some foil, put them on the foil so they can dry. Then you're just gonna add a little bit of crunched Oreos. It just gives it the perfect amount of flavor with the chocolate and the pretzels all together. It's so good. Next up is M&M fudge. This is so simple because again, only three ingredients. Now you're gonna be on low, medium heat. You are gonna add two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips and then just one 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk right on top. Now as this starts to melt, you wanna make sure that you keep stirring it because you don't want anything to burn onto the bottom of the stove top. Now once it's all melted, you're gonna go ahead and add three fourths cup of those little mini baking M&Ms and just mix them just until it's combined, no more than that. Then you're gonna take a nine by nine pan, make sure it's covered with foil, spray some nonstick cooking spray on it, then go ahead and spread your fudge all along the bottom of the pan. Then you're gonna take the rest of your M&Ms and gently put them on top. Then you're gonna press down so as the fudge hardens, the M&Ms will stay in the fudge. Now I like to keep it in the fridge for about an hour or two, let, let it stiffen up and then go ahead and remove the foil. Gently cut into it and then you're going to have perfect fudge pieces. I like these because they stay in their shape. They're not really gooey. They are perfect every time. You don't have to use a candy thermometer. It really is the easiest fudge recipe. The next recipe is banana bread or kind of like banana cake. So you're going to start with two bananas overripe, go ahead and smash them up till it's nice and smooth. Then on top of that, you're gonna add half of a package of a cake mix. Now, you can double this recipe and use the whole cake mix and add more bananas, but I didn't want a ton of banana bread, so I'm just halving the recipe today. So I used half the package. Then you're just gonna add one egg and then mix it all together. Those are your three ingredients. Now once it's all mixed together and pretty smooth, I mean you will have a little bit of banana chunks in there which is, hmm, I think, delicious. You're going to go ahead and spray two small pans. Then go ahead and try to even out your cake batter, or I guess your banana cake batter, there we go. So each pan is about filled the same. Next you're going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and you're going to cook these for about 30 minutes. Now if they need to cook a little more, go ahead and do that, but I like them a little bit golden brown and they are super soft in the middle. Up next is my two ingredients strawberry fudge. Now this is super simple because you just need two ingredients. You need strawberry frosting and you need white chocolate, about 12 ounces of white chocolate. So you're going to go ahead and dump your frosting into a bowl and then you're going to add your hardened white chocolate into it also. Now you want to make sure your bowl is microwavable. Then you're going to microwave it in 30 second increments just until everything is melted together. Now go ahead and set your frosting <laughs> mixture to the side. You're going to get a 9x9 nine nine square pan. I line mine with foil, sprayed a little bit of cooking spray, and then you can dump your strawberry fudge right into it. Now it went pretty flat on its own. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of sprinkles because you know, I have lots of little girls and they love the sprinkles. So we're gonna add a little bit of red sprinkles on top just to give it a little extra. Now I stuck mine in the fridge for about an hour until it was nice and hardened. Then you can pull it out, pull off the foil and it's time to cut. Now I know what you're thinking. It's a little odd that it's just two ingredients, but I'm telling you, it is my kid's favorite kind of fudge. Now of course I need an instant pot recipe in here so I'm gonna make dulce de leche or homemade caramel. So we're gonna start out with a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. 
Now I'm actually going to cook it inside of this can, so we have to take the wrapper off. Now once the wrapper is off, this is the most important part. Take the lid off. You will have an explosion or something horrible, so make sure the lid is off. Now to make it a little bit easier, you want to put something down below. So whether it's foil or a trivet, something so it's just not right sitting on the bottom. Then you're going to cover your can with aluminum foil. Now make sure it is sealed tight, as tight as you can get it. Then you're going to put your can just right on top of your trivet. Next, you're going to fill up your pot until the water is about halfway up the can. Now, although it's hard to tell here, the water is filling up, and when I'm done filling it up, it's halfway up the can. So now you're gonna put the lid on, make sure that it's really tight and sealed correctly, and you're gonna turn the knob to sealing. Now, depending on which kind of Instant Pot you have, this Instant Pot has a pressure cook button, or if you have a different one, it could have a manual button, but we're going high pressure all the way up to 40 minutes. When the 40 minutes is up, go ahead and turn the knob for a quick release, and then take the lid off when all the pressure has released. Now you're gonna want some sort of oven mitt to pull out your can. You can use your trivet, but for me it was easier just to use my oven mitt and pull it right out. Now for my favorite part, it's time to take the foil off of the can. Now if I would have known that it was this easy to make dulce de leche, I would have made it many, many years ago. Now the caramel or caramel is a little thick right now. The, the goal is to get it nice and smooth. So I like to dump mine into a bowl and put about a half a teaspoon of vanilla on top and just start mixing. Now keep mixing because it will get smooth and it will start to set up. As soon as it sets up, you can serve it with apples. I like to serve it with a little bit of sea salt on top. Now I just had a recipe oh, a few weeks ago where I made some caramel poke cake. That would be delicious on this poke. 